How will Robert F. Kennedy Jr. really impact the 2024 election? Consider this video part three of my presidential election series. Part one went up in November, part two went up about a month and a half ago, and part three by popular request is here. If you want to watch either part one or part two, I'll link those down below. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is easily the most intriguing candidate we've got in 2024. And I say this because he is truly the ultimate wildcard. He's running as an independent and holds certain ideas that both those on the left and the right can agree with. He will pull votes from both Trump and Biden. There's no doubt about that. The main question is which of those two candidates he'll impact more, and that's what we're trying to figure out today. As we get closer to the first presidential debate on June 27th, it seems increasingly likely that RFK Jr. will share the debate stage with Joe Biden and Donald Trump, which could have a huge impact on polling as we inch toward election day. That's honestly the main reason I'm choosing to talk about him right now. Anyways, it's time to talk RFK Jr. Where did this guy come from? Where does he stand on key issues? Who does he pose more of a threat to, Biden or Trump? It seems like a lot of people are split on that last question, so let's Let's dive in and learn a bit more about this guy. Okay, so first things first, if you somehow don't know this, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is the son of Robert F. Kennedy, also known as Bobby Kennedy, who is the brother of John F. Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States. To shorten that, RFK Jr. is the nephew of John F. Kennedy. RFK Jr. has been around politics for practically his entire life. His dad, Bobby, was a former U.S. Attorney General, served in the U.S. Senate, and was actively running for president prior to his assassination. Despite being around politics, though, RFK Jr. didn't enter the space right away. Instead, he spent years as an environmental lawyer and was even named by Time Magazine as its hero for the planet for his leadership in the fight to restore the Hudson River in New York. That's far from the only thing RFK Jr. has done, but let's now get into his policies. Most of this information is pulled straight from his campaign website, so if anyone wants to claim I'm spewing misinformation or something like that, take it up with his campaign, okay? Overall, Kennedy is running on the platform that neither left nor right is better, and that we need to end the two-party system in American politics. It makes sense for an independent candidate to say this, considering he trying to pull votes from both of the establishment parties. How might he accomplish that though? Let's start with Democrats and left-leaning voters. As I just mentioned, Kennedy spent years as an environmental lawyer and is a huge climate activist. If elected president, climate action will be a huge goal for Kennedy. He aims to end the corporate capture of environmental regulatory agencies, reduce toxic chemical pollution and plastic waste, and much more. His views on climate change and the environment are key to swinging some left-leaning voters in his favor. It's far from his only liberal policy. Policy, though. If you want another, look no further than Kennedy's views on the border crisis. Per Kennedy's official website, quote, we must recognize that the foremost victims of a porous, chaotic border are the immigrants themselves. Compassion and decency demand that we do not allow the current situation to continue. What exactly does that mean, though? Well, it certainly doesn't mean mass deportations like what Trump is promising if he were elected. While Kennedy doesn't believe that people should just be able to walk into the United States, he's a huge advocate to, quote, fully fund and prioritize administrative infrastructure for lawful orderly immigration to this country. To me, that sounds like a policy that many left-leaning undecided voters could get behind. Before discussing how Kennedy could capture right-leaning and Republican voters, let's go over his economic policies. In sum, Kennedy is a big believer that those who work hard should be able to afford a good life. He's in favor of raising the federal minimum wage, he's pro-union, supports small businesses, wants to cut drug prices, and wants to expand free childcare to millions of families. There's plenty of other policies that could be discussed here, but those are some of his economic viewpoints that could certainly resonate with Democrats and other left-leaning voters. But how about some policies that people on the right may agree with? Well, to begin, Kennedy is dedicated to, quote, restoring our rights, and his website claims that his administration will, quote, make it a top priority to protect and restore the fundamental civil liberties enshrined in the Bill of Rights that hold the essence of what America can be. More specifically, his campaign says that these rights have been increasingly under attack in the the past 20 years, starting with the war on terror and continuing into the era of COVID lockdowns. Outside of that, Kennedy is very anti-corporation, something he's made very clear in his campaign. If elected, he wants to root out corruption and establish corporate leaders who are dedicated to national interests rather than lining their own pockets. Those are a few of Kennedy's campaign policies that may appeal more to voters on the right. However, it's also important to touch on Kennedy's personal beliefs as well. More specifically, we need to talk about how the guy has been pretty 
hard in his anti-vax stances in the past. He's previously promoted the conspiracy theory that vaccines cause autism, and Kennedy's team maintains that, quote, proper safety studies have never been conducted on vaccines. Long-term, all-cause mortality studies comparing fully vaccinated children to never vaccinated children. Regardless of your opinions on that topic, it's important to note that Kennedy's anti-vax sentiments may increasingly resonate with those on the right, especially since the COVID-19 pandemic. I do also want to say that just because I associated some of Kennedy's policies as more left-leaning or more right-leaning does not mean that certain people may cross party lines in terms of those specific policies. For example, some Democrats are very dedicated to freedom of speech causes, while some Republicans are big supporters of small businesses. I'm just trying to explain how certain policies and beliefs that Kennedy holds could pull votes from both sides. Speaking of, who will RFK Jr. end up pulling more votes from? Joe Biden or Donald Trump? Now that you know many of Kennedy's stances, it's time to hypothesize which of the two party candidates will be impacted by him more. Let's get into it. In order to get a better understanding of where things currently stand, we need to go over some quick polling data for Kennedy. As of just over one month ago, according to a poll by Marist, Kennedy polled at about 16% nationally, with both Trump and Biden neck and neck at 37% each, and 10% of respondents saying they would vote other. Granted, this is only one poll, so take this data with a grain of salt. What's interesting though is that Quinnipiac polled a different group of respondents about who they would vote for if it were only a two-person race between Trump and Biden. In that scenario, Trump and Biden were tied at 46% each, with 8% of respondents saying they would vote for another candidate. Basically, these results show that when Kennedy entered the race, he pulled support from both Biden and Trump. Duh, that's obvious. But this is where a potential debate appearance comes into play. You might remember at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that RFK Jr. is getting closer to qualifying for the first presidential debate. In order to do that, he needs to hit at least 15% in four national polls that meet CNN standards and achieve ballot access in enough states to have a chance at winning 270 electoral votes. As of recording this, he has hit the 15% threshold in three national polls, and five states have confirmed that Kennedy will be on their ballots. The Kennedy campaign says it has submitted signatures for ballot access in seven states totaling 139 electoral votes, and that it has collected enough signatures for eight other states as well. So to summarize all of that, it's increasingly likely that Kennedy will share a debate stage with Trump and Biden. Kennedy's campaign director Amaryllis Fox has also said, quote, we anticipate fulfilling all participation criteria by the deadline. While presidential debates tend to have little impact on actual election results, typical debates are only between two candidates. It's possible that with a third party candidate on stage, more people will come to realize that RFK Jr. is the real deal. It's also possible that people are simply unaware of his candidacy and by hearing about him for the first time, their votes could flip. The last time we had a third party candidate as popular as Kennedy is now was in 1992, when billionaire businessman Ross Perot ran against incumbent Republican George H.W. Bush Bush and young Democrat Bill Clinton. The unpopularity of Bush and scandals surrounding Clinton led to a ripe environment for a third party candidacy. Does that sound familiar? In April of that year, a Washington Post poll found that Bush was polling at 36%, Clinton at 31%, and Perot at 30%. This poll was deemed especially significant because it was the first one that put Perot within striking distance of the major party candidates. Perot wouldn't go on to win in 1992, but he did end up receiving about 19% of votes in the general election. He didn't carry a single state, but he finished ahead of Bush in Maine and ahead of Clinton in Utah. He also carried more than 25% of the popular vote in Alaska, Idaho, Kansas, Montana, Nevada, and Wyoming. In other words, he was a major spoiler, which is exactly the role Kennedy will likely be playing in 2024. However you may view RFK Jr., it's no secret that his shot at winning the presidency is slim. It's already an uphill battle for him, and if he starts polling even higher than he currently is now, both Democrats and Republicans will pull out all the stops to prevent him from climbing even higher. So let's look at this from a spoiler perspective. Who will Kennedy ultimately impact more in 2024? At this point in time, and this is just my personal opinion, I'm going to say it'll be Biden that has more votes taken from him. Let me explain why. In my personal opinion, while I feel like Biden's base may be slightly larger than Trump's, Biden's base is also a lot less loyal. You don't have Biden supporters buying a bunch of Biden merch, and I don't think as many people would choose to vote for him if he were going through criminal trials like Trump is right now. To add on to that though, I simply 
firmly believe that Kennedy's policies align more with left-leaning voters than those on the right. His views on things like immigration, climate change, unions, and raising the minimum wage all appeal more to Democrats than they do Republicans. Sure, he's got his conspiracies and whatnot, but having anti-vax beliefs isn't exclusive to Republicans. In fact, it's far from it. And honestly, most of the biggest conspiracy theorists are so far down the Trump rabbit hole that it'll be impossible for RFK Jr. to pull them out. To top it all off, Biden has enough controversy right now to send certain voters searching for other options. People have major problems with how he's handled the situation with Israel and Palestine, and his overall current approval rating according to polling is just above 37%. That's not good. There are a million other factors to consider here, and there's no way I could fit them all in this one video. Overall though, as of right now, I see RFK Jr. pulling more votes away from Biden in the 2024 election, meaning he will hurt Biden and help Trump secure a victory. I could be completely wrong, but that's just how I see it as of now. You're more than welcome to disagree with me in the comments if you want. Now let's wrap this thing up. Guess what? We're now less than six months away from election day. That's insane to think about. As we get closer to it, tensions will become even higher than they already are, and we'll just have to wait and see how everything unfolds. I personally am very intrigued, and a bit terrified. Like I said, there's still a lot that can happen before election day. Trump was just found guilty on all counts in his first criminal trial, and he's still got more trials to come. The situation in the Middle East could get far worse for Biden. Both of these candidates could die. Who knows? The purpose of this video, though, was to shine a light on how Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has the potential to massively impact this election. He is the ultimate wildcard, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see both Biden and Trump's campaigns put out more negative press about Kennedy as we get closer to November. Neither candidate wants him to steal their votes. That's the bottom line. Anyways, that's all I've got for this hypothetical. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like and subscribe. More videos coming soon. As I mentioned previously, all of my sources for this video are down in the description below. Feel free to check them out if you're interested. I highly recommend it as they shine more light on points I made throughout this video. Also, once again, if you want to watch either my first or second 2024 election video, they're linked down below. Some of the info in them may be outdated, but still, check them out if you want to see some political content I've done in the past. Thanks so much for watching and for all your recent support. I really appreciate it. Hope I see you next time.